Hello Bitsbrew, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here, and I'm joined by my resin 3D printer. So, yeah, I've decided to uh, uh, delve into the world of 3D printing. Um, I will point out, this is just for personal use at the moment, but, um, you know, you never know in the future. Yeah, we might be able to provide some 3D printed bits, but um, right now I'm just printing stuff that's already available on the internet. Um, just for personal use, and, you know, just to get used to using this thing. So, yeah, um, I went for the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Um, I decided to spend a little bit more than um, my initial budget. Um, this is about 275 so not too bad. That's um, in pounds. Still quite affordable, really. And, yes, it's a wonderful machine. Um, now, I sort of went into this a little bit blind. I have watched a lot of videos on 3D printing, and I do recommend if you... Um, want to get into 3D printing yourself, that you watch as many videos as you can, um, even this one. Um, you might even pick up something here. Um, what this video is, is like a little video log of me using it for the first few days. Um, you'll see some of my failures and some of my successes. I do have some successful prints as well, and it is printing away behind me at the moment as we speak. Um, but there's like uh, about 3 hours and 45 minutes left on that print, so yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I have learned a lot already in like these few days, I I think, just by using it. I think um, there's only so much you can learn online watching videos, and sometimes you just have to do these things. Um, so yeah, um, there's not really much more to say. I'm just going to show you the video log, and then I'll be back at the end. Okay, guys, so I went with the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Here it is, I've just got it temporarily set up on Kay's desk, and as you can see, it's printing away. So it's currently just printing the test miniature, which is like a little chess piece. I'm sure anyone in the 3D printing world probably owns one of them. Uh, I've got a couple of hours left to go on that, but I've, I've got it set, set up. It's pretty easy to put together, not much to it. I um, had to level it and all that, and put some resin in. So I'm actually using the water washable resin. Uh, for the few extra pounds, I thought, you know, why not? And um, one thing that put me off um, so long getting a 3D printer was all the um, chemicals needed to wash the resin. Um, the sort of cleanup process afterwards looked a bit overwhelming, but actually I don't think it's too bad. But with the water washable stuff, I can literally just throw it in some water in a ultrasonic cleaner. And we should be good to go. And I'll show that process later on. But yeah, um, as you can see, see on there, 2 hours, 12 minutes left, so yeah, got a little bit of a wait. So we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so these have just finished. And there you are. So yeah, anyone who's into a resin 3D printer probably has a couple of these. And you can see it's not used up a great deal of resin, which is really nice. So what I need to do now, take this plate off, I'll take these off, and I'm going to wash them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, so I chucked them in the um, ultrasonic printer. You might have noticed that one of them was broke, um, easily repairable, but yeah, they were really stuck on the build plate. And yeah, like an idiot, I tried to um, use a bit of force to get it off, and that just sort of broke. But got them off eventually. Um, I know a lot of people have trouble with them sticking. Um, I did on my first attempt, but um, they've been fine since. But yeah, a little bit too well that time. Anyway, in the ultrasonic. And I'll give them... I mean, that's about seven minutes. They probably don't need that. And if you use an isopropyl alcohol, you can do this as well. You can even just shake it about. But I thought, I've got an ultrasonic cleaner. Why not use it? So another thing that's going brilliant for me is that I put one of these little UV nail-like things and it doesn't work. <laughs> Not at all. So um, I'm going to send that back. I've already got a replacement on the way. It's only cost about £10. Um, I suppose you get what you pay for, but you expect it to work. Um, yeah, nothing. So that's great. Um, I do have a UV light. That For these, I'll just shine a UV light on them um, once they're done. And yeah, they've been first ever 3D printed stuff and then I'll be um, tomorrow I'm gonna move on to an actual miniature so um the ultrasonic cleaning is just finished and look at the color of that water 
Um, just shows how much you do really need to wash these. Um, but yeah, they're looking pretty good now. They feel... Oh, they f don't feel as greasy as they did. They feel nice and smooth. So yeah, um, get them dried out. Get it clued back together. Um, before I do that though, I will put the UV light on them. So here they are. All done. So yeah, it's quite late now because um, my 3D printer was delivered quite late in the day. So, yeah, tomorrow I'll be trying to print my first miniature. So yeah, let's go straight to that. Okay, so it's a new dawn and a new day. And this is the miniature that I'm going to attempt to print. So I was looking on the um, interwebs for different free miniature files and I came across this one. Um, the reason I picked it is mainly because of all the little details on it. Um, yeah, also there's a big old scythe. You can see it needs a lot of supports. So it's going to be quite fun. Um, a, a lot of people have suggested um, tilting the miniatures at 45 degrees. Um, with experience from the test prints, yeah, it might be a good idea not to have a big solid base stuck to a build plate. Um, I'd like to point out as well, I did use some metal scraper to get them off, um, and that, that was even struggling, which is why I end up sort of trying to pull one, but yeah, lesson learned there. But yeah, that must be a big test. It could fail. Um, if you are thinking about 3D printing, and maybe a bit put off about the software, um, it's really easy to add these supports and tilt the miniature. Um, it's really, really simple. And then um, as long as you've got your sort of printer settings set up, which the manual tells you how to do all that, it'll export it to the right file size, or right file type, sorry. And then we can just whack that on the USB stick and into a printer, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Okay, so a couple of hours later, and this is what I'll come back to. Um, you can see I've scraped her off the bill plate. Something's gone wrong. There's some broken supports and the base is a bit flat. Um, you can sort of see under all the residue that the detail's good. So yeah, I think I'm going to retry this one. I'll put her back to her original standing position and add a few supports there and see what, how that goes. But yeah, there's going to be some failures. There's going to be some trial and error. But yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'll wait a couple more hours and see what we get then. Okay, so we had a bit of a failure with that one. Um, I did pause it and then to check on it. And that's why we haven't got the end of the um, scythe. But for some reason she has no middle, um, which is weird because the base is printed. I don't know if these supports are meant to be attached to the bottom base as well. So something's gone wrong in the middle. Um, I'll find out what it is. Um, it could be a problem with the actual print file, I don't know. I'm going to try and print something something else, I think, so I'm going to have a look around and see what I can find. Okay, so I was looking around for other miniatures to print, and I came across some Abyssal Chickens for T&D. Uh, yeah. Um, the comment said to stick them with his head facing up, so he don't need as many supports on the teeth. And yeah, I decided to make them slightly smaller and do four of them and the print has literally just finished so let's take a look and from what I can tell um, we do have some good prints there um, you can try and focus on it that'd be nice so yeah I'll get these cleaned up and we'll have a look at them and yeah the first full miniatures that I've printed on a 3d printer are abyssal chickens for Dungeons and Dragons I do apologize um, I think there must have been a problem with that last file because um you know no I had her at 45 degrees, I had her upright, and both times her legs just didn't print properly, so I guess it could be a file, I don't know. Um, I haven't really changed much to the actual 3D printer, so I don't know. Anyway, let's get these cleaned up. Okay, so they've been in the ultrasonic cleaner, and now they're under UV light, um, so my replacement one. Um, it did arrive the next day, good old Amazon Prime. Um, I'll probably get some sort of UV thing set up properly one day. So with these, you can see they're all in on this side. I'll have to flip them over in a little while and do the other side, and then I'll show you what we've got. Okay, so here they are. 
abyssal chickens. And yeah, they're pretty, really nice. See the detail on the teeth there. And on the claws as well, very fine little pieces. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going to get them based and painted at some point. But yeah, really excited about running them in a D&D game. Some enemies. Very cool. Yeah, so Abyssal Chickens, the first miniatures I've painted on my 3D printer. So, I'm going to try one more miniature, and I found this really cool sort of rat person. Little peg leg, little sort of bomb in his hand. Really, really cool. So I'm going to try printing him out. Um, he's actually currently in the printer. Um, long ways to go yet though. And yeah, hopefully this one will print out fine too. And yeah, once he's done and he's all okay, um, I'll summarise at the end. Okay, so uh, focus, focus. It's hard to see, but it looks like he's came off the printer okay. So I'm going to get him all cleaned up as before, and then we'll have a look. And here he is. Um, you'll notice messed up a little bit on the base. I don't know why I've done that. But that doesn't matter because I could probably replace the base with a GW one. But yeah, he's kind of really cool. Lots of detail for such a small little mini. Yeah, I'm looking forward to painting him up. And also the Abyssal Chickens. So it's a little size comparison, I suppose. Yeah, so another success. Um, I'm filming this on Friday the 13th, and yeah, it's it's been a good day. Um, all the prints I've tried today, um, starting with the Abyssal Chickens. I've been filming this over about uh, three days, I think. So there's a couple of, obviously a couple of failed prints, and of course they take so long. But yeah, all the ones I've tried today, um, which you see before, right there, have been a success. And I'm probably not going to do any more. I'll quit while I'm ahead. And when he finds my ideas. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen I've have printed out some um, bits and pieces as well. I did print out some torsos for my sanguinary guard in between the um, failed print and the first failed print. Possibly it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I printed them out and they were fine. And um, I had to resize some. They were a little bit big on the file, so I printed out some resized versions and they were fine. So yeah, um, overall it's been quite successful, so yeah, let's, um, let's go to the outro. So yeah, that was my first few days and first few prints using the Lego Mars resin 3D printer. I already want to get like an FDM as well, because um, I've been looking online at just like so many different designs and there's obviously some are more suitable for FDM and some are more suitable for resin. Obviously if you want to print out miniatures to use in this hobby, then you have you have to go resin really, if you really want the detail. Um, oh, but yeah, I'm loving it. I've, this thing is just never going to be off, I don't think. Um, I say, say that now. But yeah, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. So, one of the um, issues I had early on, I don't think I've showed everything in the video log. There was a couple of other prints I'd done. I've been printing some bits as well. And I had a couple of other failures. And I think one of the reasons I had was due to the um, exposure time not being high enough. Because I'm using this water washable resin, I think it needs a higher exposure time per layer. So, so that has increased the time of the prints, but it's worth it if they're successful. You know, you don't want to have a two hour print that fails when you could have a three hour print that's successful. So yeah, that's one thing I have learned using this. So um, always look on your bottle. The exposure time that you need to use is written on the bottle. You just have to set it in the software um, when you save or export your files. Um, the software, I actually found it really easy to use. I'm obviously only exporting in files at the moment and then just adding supports and stuff, which you can just do at a touch of a button. Um, very easy to do. You put in all your printer settings and export it. Stick it on there. USB stick and away you go. It's really that simple. So yeah, um, if you have, if you are someone who, like me, until recently, have been thinking about resin 3D printing for so long, but been put off for whatever reasons, um, my advice would be just to do it. Because um, I was put off for so long um, in the whole cleanup process, but the water washable resin makes that so much easier. 
just get yourself an ultrasonic cleaner and a UV light, boom. Um, these are probably the most important tool that you need. That resin gets everywhere. So please, please, please get um, um, nitrile, nitrile gloves, have to get them. Buy a uh, crap ton of them. <laughs> I was going to say something else then. Yeah, they're probably the most important thing you need. Because, yeah, you don't want to get that resin on your skin. You will find you'll probably get little bits here and there, but just be as careful as you can. Um, I'm trying to be more careful. Um, but, yeah. I will put a full list in the description down below of everything that I have bought um, to use here. Um, there will be Amazon affiliate links, but obviously I know it's a cost to you if you follow them and use them, but we do get a little kickback, which is nice. And yeah, that's really not as daunting as I thought it would be. So um, I hope if there's just one person watching who's been considering it and they've watched this video and that's, you know, given them the drive to go and get one, then that's really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving it so far. I've only had it for, what, three, four days? Ah, uh, yeah. You'll see a lot of stuff being printed out by me. Um, so yeah, social links down below. I'll be posting stuff I printed online. Um, already I'll print Posted some stuff with the Sanguinary Guard torsos that I've done, and yeah, I'm going to be scouring the interwebs for more bits and pieces, just for personal use. So yeah, um, I do plan on doing more videos regarding 3D printing in the future, so be sure to look out for them, and if you want to keep up to date with everything that we do put out, subscribe button's down below, click that bell icon if you want to be notified. And yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, and leave any comments down below, especially if you've got a 3D printer yourself, um, maybe you could explain to me what happened with that miniature with no legs. Because I'm baffled. All I can think is that there's something dodgy in the file. Because um, from what I know, from my limited experience of resin 3D printers, it just seems weird that there'd be a gap um, in the middle of a printer. And I can understand if you get some resin stuck to the bottom and then nothing prints beyond that. But for like nothing to print and then carry on printing, it's just... I don't know. I can't work that one out. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.